Welcome to WatchGuard's Daily Security Byte. I'm Corey Nockreiner. Tuesday's story is Thunderstrike 2, a MacBook firmware worm. This actually is one of the stories that comes out of last week's Black Hat and DEF CON security conferences. A research team led by Tremel Hudson showed a number of vulnerabilities that could allow attackers to infect a Thunderbolt device, which could then infect other MacBook uh, computers. And a lot of this really had to do with vulnerabilities in your firmware. Uh, basically, your motherboard runs a firmware. You might have heard it being called a BIOS, or more recently, they call it EFI, the Extensible Firmware Interface, or even most recently, UEFI, or the Unified Extensible Firmware Interface. In a nutshell, this is software your motherboard uses to boot a computer. It's the first thing that boots on your computer before it even loads the operating system from your hard drive. So essentially, here's how the researchers' uh, proof-of-concept attack worked. First, this whole attack could actually start like a normal malware attack, one you might get in a drive-by download or an email where a user accidentally installs some malicious software. And this attack used a root privilege escalation vulnerability that affects MacBooks, which was found a while ago, that could allow them to load specialized software in a special section of a Thunderbolt device, something called the Options ROM. And once the software was in the Options ROM, the next time the MacBook rebooted and went to sleep or whatever, it could actually load the infection on the firmware of your MacBook using a number of tricks. And then your MacBook's firmware would be infected until you actually reflashed the firmware. And this is pretty serious because traditional anti-malware products don't scan the firmware of your laptop. They only scan the hard drive in your memory. So it's much harder to find firmware malware. Even if you change your hard drive or totally reinstall the operating system, the firmware malware will reload it. What's also interesting is the Thunderbolt device is also infected forever. That means if you share that Thunderbolt device with other MacBooks, you would infect them as well. So this is one way a sophisticated attacker might get past the air gap network. And a lot of this has to do with vulnerabilities in the EFI, or the actual motherboard firmware. Intel actually makes the EFI or UFI firmware that many different vendors use, so it's a very common code base. And according to these presenters, Apple actually actually forked an older version of EFI a while ago. So one of the big takeaways here, one of the big protections, is not something you can do as a consumer. It's something that the OEMs and the vendors have to do, which is essentially keep up with the patches and the security fixes to this firmware software that Intel puts out. It's very, very important. Another good takeaway for vendors out there is the fact that Intel has offered some new security mechanisms that allow them to maybe do things like check the flash and have it signed and make sure that malicious flash doesn't get loaded. So vendors really need to start taking advantage of that. There's really no practical takeaway for average consumers out there. They just need to hope that the vendor solved the problem. I will say if you are a more technical consumer, the researchers mentioned that you can do forensics on your own firmware. For instance, they plan on releasing tools that might help you check the validity of the firmware you're running on your MacBook or your Windows or other PC devices out there. In any case, I've glossed over a lot of the technical details concerning a number of vulnerabilities the researchers used for this particular attack. If you're a more technical person that is interested in that, be sure to check out the blog post associated with this video. I'll give you a link to the annotated version of this presentation, which is very interesting. Anyways, that's it for today. Thank you for watching.